Hey guys, welcome to our second area and velocity time graphs video. So this video is supplementary to give you guys another example of how we can use velocity time graphs to construct position time graphs. Because I find that it's often hard to learn something having seen only a single example. So by the end of this video, you'll again be able to use velocity time graphs to construct position time graphs. So your goal is the same as for the previous velocity time graphs video. Um, since we are covering the same content, just a separate example. So let's go ahead and jump right into things. So here is my second velocity versus time graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do two second chunks this time. So we've got two seconds. We've got four seconds. We've got six seconds. We've got our little guy at eight seconds. I'm just gonna make a little line there to remind myself. And we've got 10 seconds. Again, I'm gonna do a little line to remind myself of where I am. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and just draw a dotted line here um, at nine seconds because I find that it's easier to find the area of a right triangle than any other kind of triangle. So let's go ahead and get started finding all of our positions at two, four, six, eight, and 10 seconds. And to facilitate that, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my graph, my uh, table that I'm going to fill out over time. And one thing I'm going to change. So in our previous example, we assumed that we started at our zero position. That will not always be the case. So you might get a problem that says, for example, Jim starts at two meters um, and then makes the motions that are depicted on the velocity time graph construct Jim's position time graph. So Jim is going to start at two meters. And the only thing that's going to change is that you're going to have to remember to add two meters to whatever area you have calculated. So that is our change. We're going to add this zeroth position to whatever other positions we find. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and find the area under at position or at two seconds. So after two seconds, I have a base of two, and the height of my graph here is also two. Now it's important to keep in mind the shape of your graph. So for this first section, my graph is a triangle. So I'm going to use my equation for the area of a triangle. So area is equal to one half times base times height. And that is just something you're going to have to know. You're going to have to be able to calculate the area of a triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got one half times my base, which is two, times my height, which is also two, which gives me an area of four. So between my zeroth second and my second second, so in those first two seconds, I've traveled four meters. But I need to remember to add in my starting position at zero to this area to figure out my position at two. So it's not that I've traveled to position four, is that I've traveled four meters from my starting position. So my area or my position at two is going to be four plus two or six meters. And again, I'm getting that two from the given starting position in my table. Um, you're not always going to have to do this. If it's not given, you'll assume it's zero, but it's important that you also are able to fig figure out problems where your starting position is a non-zero value. Okay. So, after that whole spiel, let's go ahead and figure out your area at position f at after four seconds. So that's going to be this big triangle here because that's going to be the easiest way to split up my areas at four seconds. So that triangle has a base of four and a height of four. So my area is equal to one half base times height. So one half times four times four or eight. And again, I need to make sure I add that final plus two to figure out my position after four seconds, which is gonna be 10 meters. And now I'm ready to move on to my first more complex shape. And that is gonna be at position six. So the area under my graph at six is going to be this whole ugly little, little, little green blobby thing. And I've got my first area, which is this triangle. 
Um, so what I'm going to want to do whenever I'm confronted with something like this is I'm going to want to break it into recognizable shapes. So I've got the first area, which is that triangle from zero to four. And I'm going to go ahead and call that a one. And I've got my second triangle or my second part of this, which is that rectangle from four to six that I'm going to call a two. So at six, my area is equal to a one plus a two or one half times the base of a one, which is four and the height of a one, which is also four plus a two, which has a, a base of two, six minus four and a height of four. So plus two times four. So what we're going to get is that our area is equal to eight plus eight or 16 meters. And again, I need to make sure I add in that last plus two to represent my starting position. So at six seconds, I will have traveled to position 18. So I'll be at, I'll be 18 meter, meters away from whatever zero is. Now I'm ready to figure out eight. So I'm going to go ahead and erase six to make this a little less confusing looking. So let's go ahead and figure out my area at eight. So again, I'm going to want to break this up into usable shapes. So I have that first triangle, a one. I have my second rectangle, which is a two. And I have my last triangle here, a three. So we know that our area is equal to a one plus a two plus a three. We also know what a1 and a2 are since we calculated those previously. So a1 is 8 and a2 is also 8 since the triangle and the rectangle haven't changed. So let's go ahead and figure out the area of this additional rectangle. So we have a base of 2 and a height of 4. So 1 half times 2 times 4 or 8 plus 8 plus 4 meters. So that's going to give me a position of 20. But again, I need to go ahead and add in that plus two to represent my initial position, putting me at 22 meters after eight seconds. Now at eight is when we finally start to go below our X axis. So that means that between our eighth second and our 10 second, we're actually going to be moving backwards. Um, and I know this because the area, because because the line for my graph is under the X axis. My velocity is negative, and that means that I have turned around. So whenever our line crosses the x-axis, like it does at 8, you can remember that your velocity is now negative, and you have flipped your direction of motion. So instead of going forward, you're going backwards. Instead of going right, you're going left. Instead of going up, you're going down, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and figure out my final area. So again, at between 8 and 10, we're going to go ahead and add all of our areas together. So my area is going to be a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3. And our a 1, a 2, and a 3 are the same as they were for our all of our previous problems. And to that, we're going to add a 4, which is going to be this side of our triangle, and a 5, which is the right side of our triangle. And I have split my triangle into two pieces because we know the equation for a right triangle, but most of you don't know how to figure, have not yet learned how to find the area of a non-right triangle. And quite frankly, we don't have the information we need to figure out the area of that non-right triangle. So this looks ugly, but we've already found a one, a two, a th and a three. So a one we found was eight. We found that a two was also eight and that a four was four. So we have to figure out a four, which has a base of one and a height of negative two. And guys, you'll notice here, instead of just subtracting this triangle, what I'm doing is I'm gonna give this, a neg this height a negative number. So that's another way that you can think about this. Instead of having a height of two, meter of two meters per second, this triangle has a height of negative two. So think about it as instead of building a pyramid, you're digging a hole in the ground. So this A4, area four is gonna be one half times the base of that triangle times its depth, so negative two. And a five is actually gonna be exactly the same since a five and a four are two halves of the same triangle. So one half times one times negative two. 
So what that gives me is that my area is 20 minus one minus another one. So what that gives me is that my area is 18, but I get to add my plus two from my initial position. So my position at 10 is going to be 20 meters. So now I have done all the legwork and I'm ready to create my position time graph. Okay, so I have copied down everything we need to be ready to plot. So again, I have my data table with my positions and my times. I have my graph with my axis labels, my title, and my nicely labeled and um, numbered axes. And you'll notice I have my x-axis and my y-axis intersecting at the very bottom of my graph. And I did that because I know that all of my positions are positive, so I don't need a negative x-axis values for this graph. So let me go ahead and graph my data. So at zero seconds, I'm starting at two. At two seconds, I'm at position six. At four seconds, I am gonna be at 10 meters. At six seconds, I will be up at 18 meters, so way up here. At eight seconds, I'll be at 22 meters. And then at 10 seconds, I'll have moved back down to 20 meters. Now, I have my dots. What I don't actually have yet is the shape of my graph. To figure out how to connect my dots, I'm gonna have to go back to my initial graph and take a look at how my velocity is changing over time. So for my first four seconds, my velocity is not constant. So my velocity, my position is not gonna be changing at a constant rate. And what that means is that the slope of my graph is not gonna be constant. So instead of having a nice straight line like you're used to, what you're gonna want is some kind of a curve. And in this case, our velocity is increasing. So the slope of the curve should be increasing. So for the first two seconds, or sorry, the first four seconds, you're gonna, your graph is gonna look something like this. So we start off with a smaller slope. You can see by drawing the line here, right? This is a smaller slope. And our slope will increase over time. Then for seconds four to six, which let me go ahead and circle those in green, what we have is a straight line. So it's a straight line with a positive slope. So what we're gonna have is a nice velocity graph that looks like this. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and erase this part of my first four seconds, that way it's less confusing. Next, let me go ahead and look at sections. At seconds six, through eight. And what's happening at sections, at uh, seconds six through eight is my velocity is decreasing. So what that means is the slope of my graph should decrease. So it's gonna be the exact opposite of my initial curve for the first four seconds. And what we're gonna have is we're gonna start with a steep slope and then it's gonna get more and more gradual like so. Next, we're gonna look at seconds eight and eight and nine, so that ninth second. And what that's gonna look like um, is we have now a negative slope and our slope is getting more and more negative over time. So that means our velocity is getting larger but more negative over time. So our slope is gonna look something like this where we start out with a very shallow slope and we end up with a steeper slope. So again, it's like our first slope, but flipped 100, flipped over the x-axis. And finally, we're gonna look at this ninth and 10th second. We're gonna look at our slope here. So the value of our slope is decreasing, right? So our the value of our velocity is decreasing. So the value of our slope should decrease, but we have a, um, but we have a um, negative slope still. So our slope is gonna look like so. So we're gonna start out with a steeper slope and it's gonna get less steep like this. So here we have the five shapes. So this is our zero to four second shape, which is gonna be a curve with an increasing slope. Then for four to six seconds, we have a straight line for six to eight seconds, we have a curve with a decreasing slope. 
for eight to nine seconds, we have a slope where the curve is increasing, the slope is increasing, but in the negative direction. And finally, for nine to 10 seconds, we have a curve where the slope is still negative, but it's now decreasing. Um, also, just a heads up, if you are in physics one and not IB physics, you do not need to know these specifics. Students in IB physics, you are expected to know this. So let's go ahead and connect the dots. And one thing, guys, I just realized I made a mathematical error. Um, the area here, this first area, is not four. It's actually going to be two. So at two um, seconds, I'm actually going to not be at six. I'm going to be at position four. Um, so that's my mistake there, guys. I'm going to go ahead and fix that on the next slide. So again, guys, to reflect the mathematical error I made earlier, um, I have fixed my data. So again, at my second second, I'm at position four. And what I did there was I forgot to multiply by a half. Um, so I got my area as being four rather than two. Um, so this graph makes a lot more sense now for me looking at it. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and connect our dots. And remember, for our first four seconds, we have a, a graph with an increasing slope like so. Then for seconds four to six, we have that nice straight line. And I'm going to go ahead and make that green just like I did earlier. Next, from six to eight seconds, we've got a slope that is positive but decreasing in magnitude like so. And then for seconds eight to nine, what we have is we have a slope that is increasing in magnitude but negative. And then we have from seconds nine to 10, a slope that is decreasing in magnitude and negative. So here is what my final graph will look like. And again, students in IB physics, you're gonna to need to know about all these questions of slope and how that affects the shape of the graph. Physics one students, you do not need to know this but it's also good to know. So you have been able to see this and you know a little bit more as a result. So let's talk takeaways and our takeaways are actually the same as the previous video. So again, to go from a velocity time graph to a position time graph, you need the area under the curve and a good strategy for finding area is to break your graph apart into useful shapes, namely right triangles and rectangles. So there you have it guys, you have seen a slightly more complicated problem Go ahead and give it a try on your own. See if you can solve this problem or see if you can solve some um, area problems. Give it your best and good luck and happy solving.